Happy New Year! My name is April Sinkhorn and I'm the elementary principal at Jacksonville Christian Academy in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Christmas break is coming to a close and second semester is right around the corner. In my last video, we spoke about how you could prepare your student for a successful school year and provide support for your child's teacher. By now, your student has been well immersed in their studies and you're finding out where they are excelling and perhaps where they are not. If your child has a D or F and the teacher perhaps has not reached out to you with suggestions, get with them no later than the start of the third quarter, which means there's only about 15 weeks left before the year end reviews start. Education, I believe, is a partnership. There are many opinions on whether homework is essential or not. My opinion is somewhere in the middle. I don't believe it's life or death, but I'm going to read for you guys uh, an excerpt from our student handbook, why we believe that homework is important. Why is homework important? For drilling and remedial activities. As instruction progresses, various weak points in a student's grasp of a particular subject may become evident. Therefore, solid drilling and review may assist in mastering essential materials. For demonstrating progress. Parents need to know what their children are learning and be aware of their progress. For completing special projects, book reports, compositions, special research assignments, and projects are just some of the activities assigned for homework. Many of these can only be completed at home with parent supervision. Here are a few homework tips and testing accommodations that may be just the thing your child needs to get over their mid-year slump. Homework tips. The outcome does not always end well for some students who are simply told, go do your homework, go do your homework, go do your homework. If they already struggle with organization, time management and focus, you've just added gasoline to the fire and a meltdown is coming either by the child or by the parent. Share the responsibility. It should not always be left up to the same parent to always be the bad guy. Take turns or divide up the subjects so it's not on one person all the time. A responsible sibling or another adult could also help with this. As an aunt, I always loved and actually still love checking their homework and having them read to me. Now having the principal check your homework isn't always a fun thing, but I really enjoy the time that we get to spend together. Take advantage of this time together with your child, but allow time for other fun stuff as well. Create good PR, and this just isn't public relations. Positive reinforcement can inspire personal responsibility. And teachers are so appreciative when parents check homework for accuracy. And another tip, whenever paper homework is completed, put it in the same spot, in the same folder, or pocket in the Trapper Keeper for easy retrieval the following day. This next section is pretty loaded, but it's several ideas uh, for accommodations that can be made in the testing process. Now this will depend on the availability um, of your school, of their resources, of the willingness of your teacher, which I hope that would never be a problem. Um, but here's a couple things. Homework, write spelling words in succession. Abeka recommends a beautiful setup for spelling words, but perhaps your student would benefit from writing them back to back. For example, bicycle, bicycle, giraffe, giraffe. A template could be made and the student could simply write the words on the blanks provided. For history, science, and health, make a habit of reading the highlights and or bold terms each night, even if homework is not assigned. Take advantage of any study guides if your child's teacher provides one. In our elementary school, third through fifth grade are required to provide them and it's filled out as the material is covered or perhaps it's filled out in its entirety a few days before the test. Testing. Some students may do a 180 simply by having the test read aloud. Maybe they're really good at memorizing facts and learning the concepts but maybe they struggle in reading. And so uh, some may struggle from distractions. Maybe just a quieter spot would uh, be helpful in test taking. Others may benefit from chunking. Now that's not really a new term, but maybe one you're not familiar with. 
chunking is breaking the test down into parts. So essentially you have section one, you would almost literally cut it and you give that to them. Then you give them section two. And if section three and four are really small, you give them those two things. It may require you making a photocopy so you can cut it without any problems but it's breaking that test down into parts to accomplish a little bit at a time. Most schools have grandparents or other maybe church members uh, who have folks who are willing to volunteer. They just want something to do. Well, do a thorough background check, uh, vet them and what their responsibilities would be, uh, um, but reach out to them and see if they're interested in helping in this area. And that just might be just the thing to not only help the child, but also help the teacher as well. My prayer is that something I shared with you today will be helpful to you or perhaps inspire you to come up with some other ideas that would be helpful for your child or a student in your classroom. Whether you're a Christian school, public school, or homeschool educator, you have a purpose. And every day, go to God and ask him for strength and wisdom in how to pursue what is best for your students.